Hello beautiful souls, welcome to my channel when the stars aligned. My name is Kelly Rowland. If you are new here, welcome. I have an exciting video for us today. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for being here. Your presence means so much to me. Uh, I wanted to make a very inspired video today about human design and eating and weaving in the types. So eating for your type. And of course, I'm going to preface by saying your body, your health is something that you are in sovereign self-responsibility for. It's nothing that human design or astrology specifically could guide you in. So of course, make sure you're taking good care of your body. You're getting the um, you know professional insights that you need. And this is just a um, more of a vibrational, energetic lens that you can try on. But of course, trust yourself, trust your body, and make sure you're getting a plethora of influences and, and really finding what works for you. Uh, but this is something that's worked for me and i definitely maybe you as well if you're drawn to my channel and my kind of energy maybe there's a sync there i don't know uh, a sync up um i'm a very empathic sensitive being i'm very psychically intuitive um i have five open centers in my chart all on my periphery of my chart so sometimes i can feel like a reflector um or you know, just like a very sensitive being I'm very responsive to my environment and responsive to food and I've noticed that applying my human design sensory type and energy type to my eating has made the world of a difference in my body, my vitality, my energy levels, my skin. Like it's just, it's amazing to notice that when I really listen and feed myself from an intuitive and energetic place, it makes all the difference. So I thought I would make this video with my, you know, going on I think seven years now of human design immersion and um, studies and, and working with people and readings and client sessions and uh, um, all of that have gathered a lot of resources and I hope that it can be helpful to you. So let's get into it. What are the components of your energy that you want to be aware of when it comes to eating and food? Well, food is energy, right? And that's something that can be so easy to overlook. Food is vibrational. Food has a vibration to it and our bodies have vibrations and what we consume we become right i think it's pretty easy to logically see that if we consume a whole lot of junky food and junky media and junky thoughts probably gonna feel kind of junky no matter what our human design is it's it's we're vibrational beings no matter any of these astrology things those astrological systems and when we attune to that energy that we uniquely have, there are certain ways we can tend for these vessels to give them the most optimal nutrition, to give them the most optimal energetic nutrition. So we're gonna look at energy type and we're gonna look at cognition type. Uh, I think I'm gonna be able to cover it all in this video. So hang tight, maybe I'll put some timestamps or if a kind soul out there wants to have some fun and put some timestamps, I would love that. Um, so energy type, let's go through a little brief roll call for the types and then how to really eat for your optimization. Generators, we'll start with generators because I'm a generator. Um, satisfaction, I can't say that word without a little smirk. It's just so great. It's like so generator, right? We're these sacral beings. We're really here to how to, we're really here to understand the healthy um, expression of what is it to be a sacral being, which society and capitalism says you're the worker bunny. Couldn't be farther from the truth. Generators are energy catalysts. You know, we impact and shift the world around us through our energy. And if 70% of the population felt really good in their energy and was putting that out to the world, we would live in a very different world. So it's not about working all the time, generators. It's not that you have this passion to be working all the time. It's you've got a passion to be feeling really good energy and, and putting that out to the world and doing and prioritizing the things that give you that good energy. So when it comes to food, what food energizes you? And, you know, you could look at magazine articles, you could read up what food gives me energy and maybe it would work to an extent. I have had far more success and I'm someone who has dove down many a health rabbit holes, so I've gone there. It's not something I'm unfamiliar with. I'm very interested in health and wellness, nutrition, supplementation, cleansing, herbs, food, minerals, all of that stuff. But for me, what has worked by far the best for my health is the energetic awareness of what am I putting in my body and how does this feel like um how does the food feel in my hand how does my level of excitement respond to consuming that food like what what is my energetic response generators are all about responding to that food and when it comes to eating as a generator what really brings you a, like a, a good feeling when you prepare it and I for example I was at the supermarket today 
and I trusted my body to guide me around the store. I knew I needed to get a few things for dinner. I was running a little low on supplies. And what I've done for a while now, and I always guide my like one-on-one -on -one clients to do in my readings as a generator is to notice what you're drawn to. Not from here, not from your mind. Gotta watch that mind. But from your gut, being a generator is a deeply mechanical process. It's a very physical mechanical process. And you wanna notice what your body's drawn to. And we'll set a little bit of a container here. I think it's really good to have ethos, right? Ethics, ethos, which are certain principles you hold. Like, because I really care for my energy, I know there are some things that just like do not do well for my energy. Even if maybe, even if I were to see them and, and get excited, there's a certain energy dissonance, right? Like for example, um, I don't need a lot of um, like, like fake sugar because some, like I just I know the sometimes the effect it can have in my system I like to have if I'm gonna I love sugar I love sweets I'm not afraid of carbohydrates at all like um but I'll have like good sugar like natural sugar or raw cane sugar or maple syrup or honey or dates and my body responds wonderful um because there's a good energy there for it for me there's a there's a positive energy there's a life force there's a vitality it's it's alive it's living food um, so I have ethos, right? Like I wouldn't buy like, <laughs> like Dunkin' Donuts donuts. I mean, maybe if I was at home in Boston and the mood struck me, I'd have a munchkin out of sheer, sheer joy and I'd have the ability to digest it and do well. But I wouldn't do that all the time because it's not within my ethos, right? So I am going to set that containment that it's good for us to have ethos, no matter what our type is, no matter what our sign is, of the kind of foods that we like feel good in our heart about consuming. Um... But then we get to the more subtle level, right? So there's some things I rule out that like, I know I'm not gonna want like highly processed food filled with like hydrogenated oils. That's just not right for me, unless it's a very random spur of the moment, joy moment, and I can handle that, but not all the time. Um, but I'll notice my body gravitates to, and I'll also pick up the food and I will hold it in my hands and I'll, I'll notice how it feels in my hands and I'll really trust my gut. And it took me a while to get to this place. Maybe it'll take you quicker, but my mind can be a little strong sometimes. Um, open crown, I can sometimes wonder, is it right or wrong? Is it right or wrong? <laughs> Just learning to really trust my gut and my intuition of, yeah, that, that feels really good for me to eat. Because as a generator, if you are making choices that you think you should, because it's what you should be doing, but it doesn't actually feel good. It's probably not gonna have the best benefits. But if you eat something that your body is like, yeah, I feel really excited about cooking that. I feel good about preparing that. I feel like it's gonna be fun to make that. I feel really happy about nourishing myself with that. You're gonna digest it well, even if it's something that maybe doesn't seem as healthy, right? Like tonight, for example, I got these little cauliflower crusts and this like cashew basil pesto and like a little bit of this cheese and I'm gonna make a really yummy, like a couple, like a little yummy pizzas. And maybe that's not as great healthy, right? As like, if I were to gravitate towards, I don't know, like a salad, you know, I also love salad. I eat salad all the time. I love salad purely just because I love salad. I'm like part bunny rabbit, but that's what my body said. And I know because I've been in the situation so many times that I'm going to digest it great because I energetically feel really good about it. And it's within my ethos container. It's like, yeah, I, energetically, I feel good about that food and it's bringing me excitement right now. So as a generator, you want to listen for the satisfaction and you want to listen for the food that lights you up. Have your parameters, have your container of like the foods that you really don't like to lean on too much because they don't have the best physical like energy to them. But trust what you're energetically drawn to and I don't like guaranteeing things, so I sound really Mars and Leo right now, but I'm just going to say it and trust your own discernment. I guarantee you're going to digest it a lot better than the food you're convincing yourself you should be having. Um, because we're feeding our energy. We're feeding our energy body. We're not just feeding our, our physical body. Of course, there's nutrients and minerals that we need to be getting within us, but to feed your energy is a whole different thing. And another component I like to... Um, guide generators in is the color what color food are you intuitively drawn to and this is fascinating I feel like this can be a very powerful experience for generators to notice what color you respond to and that might in a really mysterious beautiful way be a mechanical response from your body telling you the kind of nutrient or food or pardon me antioxidant that, that your body's needing you know without you even having to analyze it so 
for generators, notice your excitement, notice what feels fun, notice what feels like it would be like enjoyable and satisfying to prepare. And sometimes, right, it might be a nice big old salad or a bowl of, you know, really good grains and favorite kind of protein and some peas or I don't know, whatever you like. Or sometimes it might be little pizzas or chicken waffles. Like, I don't know, like you just got to trust your body. And I really, really guide generators to do that. Have your parameters, have your maybe like your no-go list and not because it's bad, but because it's just not worthy of your energy. And then prioritize the things that make you feel excited and notice how you feel. Projectors. Projectors do have a little bit more sensitivity in their system, I've noticed. A lot of projectors I've worked with, they do have a little more sensitivity around food. I think it's maybe because, um, I, I don't know specifically, uh, my analysis as like a human design reader and someone who's worked with human design very intuitively and embodied but deeply for several years now, is that projectors, aura, is, um, you know, it's like, it's external. It's really penetrating what's outside of them. So I feel like when it comes to food, they're really extracting like whatever that unique food is. They're really looking into it. They're really taking it in. So I feel like for projectors, the actual composition and like um, component of the food is more important. It can be a little bit more analytical. Like it doesn't have to be boring, <laughs> but I do feel like for projectors, the constitution of the food the purity of the food, whole food ingredients, um, as minimally processed as possible is really good for projectors because they're penetrating it. They're penetrating that food, you know? Generators, we're like open and enveloping. So there's somewhat of a resilience if it's within our ethos and our parameter and we're lit up by it and we feel pleasure and like satisfied by eating it and we feel a sense of satisfaction in the process of consuming it, whether it's satisfaction in the sense of joy or wellness or deliciousness or nourishment or sati satiation but for projectors it's success right they're eating in a way for success so as a projector you can still have like fun foods but you might want to be asking yourself what food am i going to eat for success for my body for my health for my mineral nourishment for my i don't track macros but like if you want to like for your macros um what's the food that's gonna bring me most success? And that's probably a day-to-day -day changing thing for projectors. Maybe sometimes they need more grounding, so they wanna have more dense, mineral dense, caloric dense foods. And maybe sometimes they've you know, been overly processing too much and they just need to like chill and relax a little bit and detox and they might just wanna prioritize lighter foods. Uh, I think it's really about eating for success. And when you're looking at different food items, practice penetrating it. Like penetrate that food and really look at it and maybe you'll know, like, is that correct for you or not? Um, manifestors, power, what do you want? <laughs> Honestly, I feel like with manifestors, it's, um, it's really the sky is the limit. And I love working with manifestors. And also I sometimes don't understand how to work with manifestors because you are so here to guide yourself. So really the best way to work with manifestors is to just guide them back to their own power. Um, and that is usually what's most effective. And with being a manifester, it's all about you choosing. So what are your uh, goals or your visions or your passions with food? Food can be a tool for you to practice your power, to pra practice your initiation, right? Where sometimes I notice manifestors that I know or have known or have worked with um, can sometimes struggle to hold their initiative and their power. And there's simple ways you can play with that. You can get really specific and powerful and direct with what you consume. Um, it can, I would say it actually can be really great for manifestors to be not disciplined, but consistent. I'm like, yeah, I eat that way because I want to eat that way. And it could change in a, in a season or two, you know, it could change in a week or two, but really letting yourself go all in on something. Or the opposite approach of consuming what you really feel um, empowered by eating. I do find that manifestors can um, adapt to different types of diets depending on what feels most powerful for them and what they want and um you know there is an exper experimental quality to manifestors you are here to experiment to know what you like and don't like right like the quintessential manifestor child is the kid who just like walks out of the gate without telling their parents because they just want to see what's out there and they just want to figure it out for themselves so figure it out for yourself maybe also, it's good for you as a manifester to not take in too much external information. I think that could actually dampen your fire and your 
initiative. If you're listening to too many other influencers or too many other social media accounts or too many other podcasters about what you should eat for X, Y, Z, it might actually take you away from your own initiative of what do I want to eat? What do I feel powerful about eating? What feels good in my system? What am I choosing? And that could align with your unique ethos. Um, I know a few manifestors who are like, really big advocates for example for like plant-based and i don't judge what diet is better or worse i'm i'm very trusting and each person has their own (laughs) biological intelligence and that can also change and shift throughout life um but there's a certain like do you feel empowered by the food you're eating maybe that means you like to eat organic maybe that means you'd like to eat simply because that empowers you it's more about the feeling of empowerment and like even a bit of identity that you get from what you're eating reflectors I feel like reflectors are so interesting when it comes to eating and I am blessed to know one reflector very closely, my mother, and she can't, you know, she's not the best example, but I've noticed that um, she is a bit of a hummingbird in the way she eats and she samples things and the reflector aura is to sample, right? It's to sample and to try and to notice what sparks delight and to be surprised. So I feel like for reflectors, prioritize freshness. That could even be like the freshness of ingredients. Like you go to the supermarket multiple times a week because you want really fresh ingredients. Or you try different things. Or maybe you even buy things in smaller quantities so that you can let yourself sample and not be stuck with having to eat, you know, like a whole two pound bag of kale. If all of a sudden you don't want kale anymore, right? Reflectors are cyclical like the moon, you're changing. So you may also notice that there's a certain seasonality in your approach to eating in different times of your cycle if you're a woman or in different times of the moon cycle, if you're just, you know, any human being, um, that you're drawn to different foods. I feel like as a reflector, it's it's good to not put yourself in a box when it comes to food. Again, maybe have your parameters. I think those parameters are good for everybody of like, I don't like consuming that because it doesn't feel right in my system. It's not worthy of me. Like I, I don't want to put my energy with that. But also let yourself experiment and sample and try things and Also, maybe notice what surprises you, what feels like a, ooh, that's kind of delightful, or didn't expect that, or that kind of, and it's so funny because as I say this, I have so many memories of my mother, Um, and that's when I always saw her the happiest eating food, is we would go to the supermarket, and she would always go the night of, it's so funny, like maybe she was doing a reflector thing, I think she wanted the freshness, and she's like, oh, I I really kind of want that tonight, and she'd pick something out, it'd be so random, Um, but then she found her things, and she would cycle back through, and I can actually think of that now, she does have cycles, Um, I haven't lived with my mother for a long time, but I'll talk, or I'll maybe reflect on things she shared, and she has certain things that she cycles through, so I think there's a cyclical pattern when it comes to eating as a reflector, but let yourself stay light, let yourself stay curious, Um, again, this is not health advice, but I do feel like there's maybe something with reflectors around staying like a little lighter. Like you might not like having a big, dense, heavy meal. You might like um, having like smaller meals throughout the day, like eating every couple of hours, um, grazing. That might be a nice approach for a reflector because you have that sampling aura um, and so much openness in your chart. Food can also be a really powerful way to um, like ground you and, and bring you ongoing nourishment. Um, So we're actually going to keep this video to just the types and I'm going to make a second part for the cognition, which is your sensory type. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know how this resonated for you and what your type is. And if you can notice those eating patterns below, I'm going to get my up, well, this oven preheated and I'm going to get my little cauliflower pizzas going and I'm so excited. But yeah, if you want to learn more about your human design, I would be honored to be your guide. I offer in-depth embodied human design readings and sessions and coaching and you can find those links below i've been doing this for about six years now and it is so amazing year after year to just see how much this system and different systems can really support people to come home into their authenticity into their unique expression and their embodiment and owning the individual energy of their their expression so that's me for tonight Let me know what you're cooking for dinner if you want to, and I'll catch you on the next video.